and today we will have be having great matches. The merciless Mike Ackerman against Jackknife Jacob in the biggest revenge match around. And the Lumberjack match, Sean Crusher Crossen versus Brian Pile Driver Peterson. And now with an exclusive interview, take it away, Ray. Okay, hello folks, thank you Mike. We're here with an exclusive TWF interview. This is the Twin Cities Wrestling Federation now. We're interviewing Crusher Crossen. Crusher, um, this is show 28. You've got a big match coming. Whoa, 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 Rob, let me take the mic, Ray. I have name confusions today. Hey, welcome to a very special edition of Killer Penguin Productions Presents. My name is Scott Jameson. Um, as those of you that know me know I have a passion for wrestling. Understatement, I realize this. But there's a group I got involved with, oh, several years ago, uh, a group known as a faction as the NWF. Um, the National Wrestling Federation uh, Kids Professional Wrestling Group. Uh, this is a very special occasion for me as well as them. What we have is a very special roundtable discussion, sharing the memories. Um, it's a roundtable reunion 30 years later for the NWF. And with me I have um, Sean Crossan. And Sean, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce the guys at the, at the table, as it were. Sure. Well, you know, you just introduced me, and then there was, of course, the co-founder of the league. He likes to be called Chuck Lane now, but I have to refer to him as Charlie. Well, guys, let's be honest. I, I was the founder, <laughs> but we'll argue till we die on that one. <laughs> That's right. Um, and then also with us here, and, you know, Chuck and I had done this with Scott about 10 years ago when we did the documentary. And then also we got Chris Hansen, and I, we have Chad Rancourt, two guys that were in the show a big part of the show back in 86 in our big years with the armory cards. That was where these two really were involved the most. So, and uh, their character wise, you have Crusher Cross and the five time NWF world champion. Don't forget Hall of Famer. <laughs> and the Hall of Famer. <laughs> then you got Luxury Lane, Sergeant Smash, and Dr. Destruction, who also played Mr. X2. So, in a mass, that was the first. Oh boy. Oh really? boy. Really? <laughs> Stand up! Get up! I am standing up. Get up! <laughs> what kind of Americans are you? I don't believe this. Well, I guess that's Sergeant he knows Smash's it's a work, right? <laughs> yes, he knows it's a work. <laughs> so, for, you made reference to armory shows. Yeah. For those that didn't see the, haven't had the, the opportunity to see the the DVD or the or the the, the special that we had done. Your background, how did the NWF come about? How did you get to do the Armory shows? And even cross-promoting with a, a local legendary wrestling promoter in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Yeah, Eddie Sharkey. Well, you know, every, everything started, it was so gradual. I mean, we started out, Char Charlie and I started out on bed mattresses in my basement, and that's kind of how it started. But it took a long time to get to the point where we were ready to go and do an actual Armory card. and. Um, where we went to the Anoka Armory and promoted shows there. And we'd have, th the first one we did, we had about 350 fans show up, which is a pretty good crowd considering. You know, and, and I guess when you look at it nowadays, people look at, you know, come to me and say, well, how did you do that? I mean, how did you manage to pull off and get that kind of turnout? And what it is, is you have to realize, you gotta, we gotta predate everything we know today. Forget the internet, forget YouTube, forget satellite television, all that was not around. And all you had really was community television, which we had a show on in about every cable market in the Twin Cities, twice a week, prime time hours, for about two years leading up to that first Armory event. They used to, uh, they used to be known as um, papering the town and poster drops. <laughs> yep. Seriously, <laughs> I did my share of that too. I mean, we would we would be on the air, and we would be able to, you know. And we at first we didn't know how to do that exactly because there's some rules in, in public access about as far as advertising. But the rules were we just couldn't mention ticket prices. But other than that, we could promote ourselves as doing this event as because we were nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. But, but we had the show on the air for so many years, and and. We had a fan base there, and people, you know, we had friends and family come there, but I'll tell you right now, we didn't have 350 friends and family. Right. There was legitimate fans there, and that was, that was cool. That was, that was the turning point for the league, really, when we started doing those live events. Cool. 
And how and why did you guys get involved? Well, I can, I guess <laughs> I started out with Sean and, and you know, we've discussed it in the past about talking on the phone and watching Hulk Hogan, AWA, and, and uh, you know, we came together and, and, and went to the cable station, took the classes to run the equipment. And, uh, you know, it was, we, at that time, obviously we thought that, uh, you know, doing it in the basement was professional with the mattresses mm -hmm. and the f makeup and you know fake blood and this mm -hmm. and that and but it, it really progressed quite quickly I mean when you look at going from that basement into the cable you know right. my time with the uh, the wrestling mm -hmm. it, it went very fast because I think I was in and out within a year within the first year yeah okay. so I mean we we rapidly moved but because the reason I think we moved so quickly is because we all of a sudden started to get an influx of uh, kids that wanted to be in the show and people watching it. And Sean and I, our big dream was to do it in a real wrestling r uh, ring. Well, the furthest I got with it was, you know, at the cable show, at mm -hmm. the cable station. That was a big thing with the lights and the cameras right. and the studio and yep. everything going on. So for me, that was exciting. And then to see, you know, to keep in communication with Sean after I moved down to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And uh, then where he kept going with the show is just remarkable. And that's why, yeah. you know, when you look at history, you go on, on the computer and look at Wikipedia and see the history of pro wrestling, you'll see NWF mm -hmm. in there. And, uh, and you, you know, the film and the, the documentary, the books, uh, you know, we won several film festivals. Yeah. And I was part of that going out to Hollywood that's and, right. and uh, going out to New York to the uh, theaters and opening up mm -hmm. and winning uh, best sports documentary so those things were pretty cool because I think today I, I'm pretty sure this won't ever happen again because of all the technology we have in our society and I, I, I just don't think the from a liability standpoint I agree with that completely yeah I think it, a lot of it has to do with the passion that you guys have for what you did and just even 30 years later the contact that you guys have maintained you know, you may be in different corners of the state, different corners of the country at times, but the fact that you guys still got this bond this this time later, you know, and the passion you guys had putting the show together initially as a group of kids. Literally. That was aired in 22 states. Right. And, uh, because Sean sent those you know, tapes out and got it promoted, and it was cool. We were in Maryland in, what, 2000? We were at the Fan Fest in yeah. Maryland. We were asked to go out there, and we promoted the documentary, and... We were with uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, King Kong Bundy, all these That's wrestlers, cool. and we're hanging out. We're all talking about wrestling, and and uh, those guys mm -hmm. knew of the NWF, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously it's the wrestling world, right. and we are part of, and still are See, part of that wrestling huge. world, you know. You know, they they respect people for what they do and the passion that they have. You know, I having been involved in the wrestling business for almost 20 years on the backside, you, you get to learn that. The guys don't, they'd rather have guys that show the passion for the business than somebody running up to them with a pen and paper. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a mutual respect factor. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it is a brotherhood. You know, it really is. And that's kind of how it started, you know, and then Charlie was involved really heavily with the building of it. By the time we hit 1986, and it was just prior, I, I haven't actually met Eddie Sharkey yet, but we were, and we were, our wrestling kept getting a little bit better mm -hmm. and a little bit better. You know, when you watch the early stuff, the wrestling is not textbook professional wrestling by any means. I'm not going to come out here and pretend it is. But it was getting better to the point where it was something that was entertainment enough. And then that's when I'd like to hear, like, from, we'll start with Chris. Because Chris, mm -hmm. Sergeant Smash is what his character was. He came on to the show right about the time of 1986. Tell us what you thought of the NWF and how you got involved. Well, my brother and I had just got cable TV and it was like a real treat because we'd only had the network TV for the longest time. So we were uh, uh, watching public access one night and my brother's like, oh, you gotta watch this one show on, it's, this, it's kids wrestling. I'm like, what? What is this? So he tells me what time it's on and I'm watching it and I'm like, this is great. It's like there's kids in the ring and everything and it's like this is awesome and it's like there's a number flashing across the bottom. It's like some NWF hotline number. So I'm like, uh, I was a little 
leery of calling it right away, so I waited till the next week and watched another episode. I'm like, oh, all right, I'll call it and see if they need any more wrestlers. Because I was a huge fan. You know, I loved wrestling. And I thought, this is like a dream. I could actually be a wrestler, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it was Sean who picked up the phone. I was like, hey, you guys need any more wrestlers? He's like, yeah, come to Fred Moore Junior High next weekend. And uh, I'm like, okay. So I don't know. I told my mom what I was up to, and surprisingly, she didn't get too terribly upset. But I, I wasn't into organized sports. I didn't play football or basketball or hockey or any of that stuff. I was kind of short for my age and not very athletic. And my, my brother was all these things I wasn't. But I just didn't fit in with that sort of thing. But wrestling, I thought, this I might be able to do. So I went to the show, and you know, the rest is history. I went down the stairs. I stopped about halfway down the stairs while my mom was still out in the parking lot. I thought, OK, I, maybe I might change my mind here, because I heard all this ruckus downstairs and all this music and yelling and carrying on. I thought, I don't know. You know, I was kind of self-conscious at that point, And I thought, what if I stink? You know? But I thought, I'll give it a try. You know, I'll see what it's like, and I'm, I'm really glad I did. coming to the ring at this time. Smash is going to send Tough Tony back to the motherland in a body bag. Well, they hear the, the opinion from uh, Temple Clawson. This match is going on really good. We have both wrestlers in the ring at the time. They're both extravagant wrestlers. They both seem to be knowing, knowing what they're doing and how they're doing it. Some of, the, some of the matches we have on our today's card contain uh, Rattlesnack Jake versus a Rock and Roller, then uh, Rough Ryan versus the Super D's, and just to name off another few, it's going to be a full hour of fun and excitement, so grab what you got by your tables or out of your refrigerators and stand by because you don't want to miss the upcoming card. Always be sure to take and uh, watch us every Tuesday and Thursday on Group W Cable Access. Um, we really appreciate the viewing. The more audience, the better. And uh, sitting here next to me is Butcher Bulldog. Well, Butcher, you have a match today against Corporal Clawson. How do you feel as if you're going to take on that match? Well, I think I, I'm going to make him go home. I'm gonna make him go cry to his mommy. I'm gonna pin him one, two, three in the ring. Everyone knows that Rush is number one, and, and that USA is out. Well, what do you think of what do you think of this match going on right now? I mean, you got one guy from the U.S. So, but it was so much fun. Oh, it's just a blast. The thing that's that's cool about wrestling in itself that you guys have all found out, it kind of draws another side of you out in some ways, portraying the character. And, you know, like you said, you know, I've, I've obviously got the same issue you do. Athletic-wise, I'm, I'm a zero. 
That's why I chose television. Well, I mean, today's you know, a different I'm story. I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm Superman today compared to what I was <laughs> 28 years ago. But, you know, and, and that's what's cool about the business, too. It, it doesn't always reflect on ability. It can be a character and far outshine half the guys in the, in the locker room or in the ring. Yeah. You know, Hogan's a prime example. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. Chad, you too, you were watching. Now, Chad, we were all up in the area of Anoka. Chad was in Brooklyn Center. Okay. Tell us how you found out about the end. I'm curious. I never really even asked you this. Like, how did you find out? Um, I ate, slept, breathed professional wrestling. I mean, that's all I cared about. Uh, we were having these kind of matches in the hallways of the apartment buildings that I was living in with other kids, you know, in the complex. And um, I was an amateur wrestler uh, in school, played football, um, but it was my dream to become a professional wrestler. So I'm watching TV and I come across uh, the NWF. And like you said, at the bottom of the screen, it was flashing. I, th I believe it said, now recruiting wrestlers. Does that sound about yeah, right? Yeah, we did a lot of that. Man, I, you would have thought I hit the lottery. Uh, I couldn't <laughs> wait. Called him up, and I don't remember what you said. Yeah, come on down, and you know, uh, it, it, it was a blast. Um, came down. I think it spent what close to two years yeah. on and off uh, with the league. So uh, you yeah. know, and that was the outreach, and we had a few of them come from this area. You know, our show, the next market that the show was seen the most in was the Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center area. Yep. I had agreements here initially because when we first started out in Anoka, Ramsey and Coon Rapids and Champlain that was our core and then we went to it spread out to Blaine and Coon, mm -hmm. and Andover and all that and then Brooklyn Park was the next system I went to yep. and after that Shoreview and Roseville systems those were the systems we were always in twice a week nice. and then Minneapolis after the Tribune article came out then UC Video contacted me and said they'd like to put it on in Minneapolis and they covered Minneapolis St. Paul so that's how we got the connection and um, Minneapolis and St. Paul were on Saturday mornings. Other than that, we were on prime time during the week everywhere else. And you're either Tuesdays or Thursdays here, if I remember right. Yep. We got, cable came to our area in 82. My folks got it that same year, and after watching my fill of Twisted Sister and MTV and damaging myself beyond words there, you know, I started surfing <laughs> through the access stuff and ran across you guys, and I'll be damned if I wasn't hooked. <laughs> Thanks well, for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what you failed to mention, Crusher, about uh, uh, the cable access, there wasn't 100 channels like there are now. No, so the right. odds of coming across our show were much greater mm -hmm. than... And there wasn't interactive menus that took you to things. So no. you basically had to channel surf to kind of find out yeah. what you wanted to watch. So it was almost like an advertising type thing. If you were on, somebody might flick across you mm -hmm. and there's surfing. Odds were good. You know, so that, that was good. And uh, that's how, you know, and, and the buzz. I, I, just, I just remember the buzz back then. Everybody was talking about oh, the show at one form or another, especially in school. We, we heard about it all the time. Some kids would, you know, crack jokes. They'd say, what are you doing that stuff for? They weren't wrestling fans. They didn't care either way. But a lot of them, you know, and then there, and I remember one time I was sitting in math class. This is a good story. You know, when we had to talk about stories, mm -hmm. I was a pretty shy kid in school, believe it or not. I mean, I had this alter ego on the show, Crusher Crossing, but when I was in school, <laughs> I was pretty quiet. School, but <laughs> no, out I, of school, he wasn't hey, it's, shy. <laughs> it, it's Fred Moore Junior High. I'm in class. It's math class. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening to these kids in front of me talking about, oh, and then the, the, the referee came in and then they, they threw him out and then they did this and that. They're talking about our show. He was, I, I was listening to this for a while. I'm like, wait, he's describing the match. Because <laughs> it was just on. And wow. see, here they are talking about it. They didn't even know that I was back there. That's how quiet I was. That's, funny. <laughs> That's cool. You know, so I, you, know, you kind of see that, and you're like, well, you know, people, people are watching. So, and it was shortly after that, you know, later on that next year, that we decided, you know, let's do this armory event and see what we can do. Mm -hmm. That was my big dream. I wanted to do it in front of people. It was fun to do it on community television, you know, and I wouldn't trade that for the world, but to do it in front of a live mm -hmm. audience, that was even funner. You know, that was, that was really a good time. Well, with you guys, what was your, uh, some of your favorite memories, just whether it's Armory, whether it was at the beginning, or just in general? I mean, guys you liked working with or against, or just memories in general. It could be outside the ring. I don't care. It's just, uh, you can go first. <laughs> Uh, I remember the armory. I remember all of us peeking out and looking at the crowd because we couldn't believe how many people were there. We were in, uh, we were in awe. Um, I don't think we expected that many. We did not expect that many, but we got it. Uh, I remember at the time a wrestler named Le Leaping Lanny Poffo was popular in the WWF. 
and he come to the ring throwing out these poems that he wrote. So I thought I'd do the same thing. I don't remember what I wrote. I wish I would have kept one of them. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Handwritten <laughs> personalized poems before the days of copy machines and computers, right? <laughs> right. Handwritten. Yeah. And, uh, and you start uh, throwing them to the crowd. I remember this. Yep, threw them to the crowd. ladies and gentlemen. What is this? This doctor or whatever his name can't take a little pain. Can't even start out to take pain. Avoiding Mr. X totally. Alright, now this is the stuff I like to see. That can be stretching. That weird on the yellow. I don't know where he come where he's coming from. Destruction complaining. All right, this is getting good. Uh oh, going headcracker. Oh, no, ah. leg drop. This is the stuff I like to see. Uh oh. Dr. Destruction definitely has the edge in this match. <laughs> Mr. X complaining Dr. about right the match. Look at those muscles. Look at that. Guy in the yellow don't even have it. Ooh. Into the turnbuckle. Ooh. No clean break. This is just wonderful. What does the rep think he's doing? All he did is had him in a headlock. And he kicked to the lower like back. Well, hip toss. One, two. Gets the count of two. Ooh, and an arm twist. Arm lock. Oh! Nice move there by Dr. Destruction. Ruff asking for submission. What is, does that man think he's doing? Come to me and just start cheating. Is hurting. <laughs> All right, ladies and 
gentlemen, we are here at the Anoka Armory, October 18th, 1986. Your commentators, Jason Clausen, CJ Pregler, and Troy, the Butcher Bulldog, Otto. Thank you. Oh, looks, could be a figure four. It is. Taking a breather. One, two, three, four. Check it. Doctor Destruction wants him in the ring, not outside the ring. <laughs> Professional wrestler. Now enters the ring. <laughs> Test of strength. Oh! Oh, wow. Ooh! And a form. Ooh, the esophagus. Guy in the yellow. Goes by Mr. X. Could be a neck breaker. Oh, it's a front face lock. Oh, reverse card. One, two. We get it. Here is the winner of your match. The official winner, Dr. Destruction. There was one of the NWF's own best in the world, Eddie. Woo! Why, who invited this? You know, that's one of the big questions people ask me. How did you, how did you get, how did you get the money to do it? Because it wasn't, you know, the armory didn't come for free. No. Um, it, it costs about 300 bucks to rent the place back then, and in today's standards, it's about 600 bucks. That's about right. That's about a half day. Yeah. And uh, the, what I did, nobody told me how to do this. I just kind of assumed this is what we're going to do. And, and what I did is I just went around town and just knocked on the doors of businesses and asked if they'd sponsor us. Mm -hmm. I figured if I get enough businesses to give us some money by putting their, their business card in our program guide, which we'd do up, and then that's another avenue to sell yep. and get people to buy in. Yep. So we would got enough, you know, a lot of businesses said, nope, not interested. <laughs> Wow. You got a lot of rejection, especially the local ones. Of course. But the banks, the car dealerships, the ones that had money, they gave us money. Nice. And we got enough money. We raised enough to, to get the down payment to do it, and then we had to build a ring to get in there, and it was just a whole first armory car. was a big gamble. Mm -hmm. We got out of carrying insurance, though, didn't we? They didn't ask for it. That's the thing. That's <laughs> wow. the other thing I get asked. How would you get in there without insurance? Oh, that's huge. <laughs> the, the National Guard Armory Different in those day, days. Though. No Different kidding. Time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We, they, I don't know if they even entirely knew what we were going to do, but they did not ask for insurance. And it was one of those things. Um, because I was looking at other avenues. I wanted to do the pumpkin bowl and an oak. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do all these things in the school, didn't want to do that. But I wanted, uh, some people would bring up insurance and they didn't bring it up. The staff sergeant that ran it did not ask for insurance. Wow. And I was smart enough at 15 or 16 to not ask if they needed insurance. So I just left that go yep. and in we went. <laughs> yep, yep, and it worked out. And it worked out. Very cool. I think a lot of my, uh, best memories came more so outside the ring. Just the friendships that mm -hmm. were made because of the show. Because yeah. really, I mean, I was not only living my dream, so to speak, being in the ring, but I wanted to make some friends at the same time. Yeah. So, I don't know, I mean, I have a lot of really good memories, I suppose. Uh, I remember when I talked Chris Downs into coming onto the show. I was in ninth grade and if I could talk about him for a minute. Yeah, go ahead. He wasn't <laughs> uh, <laughs> wasn't the easiest fellow to get along with. Uh, we were paired together in a science class, and he had just moved up here from wherever he came Indiana. from. Is that where he came from? Yep. Well, anyway, uh, we didn't hit it off too great because I like to skip school. 
and he was left to be all by himself to finish our science project, and he didn't take kindly to that. <laughs> we had some kind of sludge test. I don't know what the heck the sludge test was, but I remember him walking through the hall, and he saw me. He goes, yeah, I did pretty good on our sludge test. I said, oh, did you? Oh, that's good. You know, we just didn't like each other. <laughs> so anyway, you know, he just, I could just tell this was heading for trouble. We were going to spar off at some point. And well, anyway, I was outside of a Tom Thumb store. I was walking in as he was walking out, and he called me a bad name. I called him one in return. He dropped his bike and headed into the store after me. And I thought, oh, here we go. And they had a tag team wrestling arcade game in the Tom Thumb. Well, this saved my butt, because I started playing it, and he's like, hey, how do, how do you play this? How do you play it? And I was like, hmm. I showed him how to play it. We became friends from there, because then we found we had something in common. We both like wrestling. We both like video games. And then we were talking, and I was telling him, hey, I'm in this wrestling show. I probably shouldn't have said anything, Sean, because, you know, look what happened. But anyway, uh, he joined, him and his brother. Uh, so... No, that's that's one of my favorite memories. It, it started out to be something bad, but it ended up being something something good. Yeah, and what he's cool, he's talking so. about I, the Ice Dragon was the character. Yeah, Ice Dragon. He's a you know Chris is a guy that um, he's not like this today, but back then he was one of these kids that were just you know his attitude on the show was his attitude in real life, and he so he played he was a natural heel. That's what he used to call these guys natural heels. They made great for the show because their their character was needed. It would have been mm -hmm. really boring without them. But boy, were they hard to handle outside that ring. Oh, he's and, a uh, live wire in your face. I, I oh. had to, you know, we did suspensions on the show for real, for people that got out of line. Mm -hmm. and, and we, the Ice Dragon is not on the Fall Brawl armory card mm -hmm. uh, because he was suspended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they were really a hard to handle. But gosh, I, I, I'm so grateful we had them because yeah. they made for great and entertaining. You could thank me for that. <laughs> yeah. All right, luxury. Well, I, I mean, I had many <laughs> memories for a short period of time, mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, both in the wrestling and outside of wrestling. And I, I guess, uh, you know, I used to love just, I liked, I used to like to fight when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would get in fights all the time, and I did it for fun. It was fun to fight. So mm -hmm. I was kind of a, you know, whatever, a fighter, I suppose, back then. And. So, like in wrestling, when we were doing it, no, don't worry, I'm not gonna <laughs> smash. It's okay. I'm the one that I am the one that has to worry. <laughs> Sergeant like, Smash is a little nervous. <laughs> to be him and I had some times on the. I'm not too worried. <laughs> you know, I'm not too worried. Get a bag of chips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why, don't you eat a, why don't you eat a few more carbs? Yeah. Why don't you eat some meat? Uh oh, now we're gonna get a wrestling match. But <sighs> no, anyway, just on a serious note, though. Uh, Maybe not. We used to. I mean, I used to. Back when we were kids, we did, like Chris Daniels, great guy. And, you know, he was kind of the giant of our wrestling at the time. And I used to hit him and take chairs, and Sean would be laughing. <laughs> Sean and I would sit there and just attack him, oh, and we'd get three funny. or four people because he was kind of the Andre oh, the Giant of yeah. of our wrestling. And uh, we take boxes. Oh. Uh, one time I took like an album cover and yeah. lit the album in it and cracked it on him. I mean, I mean anything <laughs> I could get my hands on. Well, he could take the punishment, too. <laughs> So, That's funny. you know, it was uh, it was really at that time it was really fun. But you know, um, moving into the from the basement and then moving in to the cable mm -hmm. uh, uh, room like this, um, mm -hmm. not as fancy, Studio. but you know, we had a little stage and you know having the equipment. Those were pretty cool memories of you know running a camera, helping out in the back, yep. editing. So that was really a unique memory for me, That's and, cool. and uh, I enjoyed that. And and uh, and then outside of wrestling, I guess, you know, getting to meet some fans. Like mm -hmm. when we went to Maryland, um, I was in Mexico one time and uh, and signed an autograph for a lady for wow. her kids because they had watched, seen this on TV. You know, the oh, NWF, cow. and um, you know, so those kind of things are pretty cool when you can touch someone and and they like you know they like your character, mm -hmm. like you. And you know, being at the uh, when we were at the fan fest with all the other pro wrestlers, um, having the fans come up and talking to us, and mm -hmm. and I seen this or buying a documentary or mm -hmm. or a book, you know, and and just uh, and then just talking to, you know, all, all the other wrestlers. Well, it was cool. All that that's a good life experience, you know, when oh. you when you look at uh, where we started, where we ended, and to think like 
you know, Chris mentioned earlier, you know, being here now, mm -hmm. looking at the success of where this has gone from, mm -hmm. from you know, you know, 30 years ago and kids and wrestling to actually being recognized in the wrestling world. Right. In the magazines, yep. on Fox, on ESPN, all mm -hmm. these things that, you know, winning all the awards. So that's quite an yeah. accomplishment and, and was really, uh, for my small part in that, was a great experience. So. And, see, and you touched something, you know, the interaction with the fans especially, whether it's what you guys do, you know, the stuff, you know, I've experienced it too on the backside, but it just, you don't know the level of how much you may have touched someone. Yeah. They may have something really horrific going on in their life, and you're bringing that, that little bit, that little glimmer of, of hope. You know, you guys are, you know, give them that few minutes of joy. The special needs people that we had come out to mm -hmm. the Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot just, about them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speech. Yeah, there Speaking was, uh, we, we did, they got in for free. They never paid. Um, there That's was right. a, a special needs facility in Coon Rapids, and I forget where it was, and they had, um, there was like a, one of the wrestler's uncle was in there, and that's how we got the connection. And anyways, we set up a, we set up a section just for them, and for every cool. armory card we did, they would come in, and they loved the show. They were huge mm -hmm. fans. They, they, they watched the show on cable. And yep. So we had a whole section just for them. There must have been at least 20 or 30 of them in there yep. on each card. Yep. That w that they would get to come in and um, yeah that was pretty cool. They loved it too. Yeah, you just they never truly realize how much you're gonna touch somebody. Yeah. Well, and each of us were touched by it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned you loved wrestling. You got into it. Wow, this is yeah. awesome. You did. I did. Oh. Yeah. It was you know for yeah. the wrestlers, for the fans, for you know mm -hmm. for everybody. And it just uh, it was a it was a really unique time that I just don't think we'll ever see again because yeah. of. The way our system, you know, the way everything. Well, and that's you know, that's why I wanted to do this again with you guys too, because you know, when I did the the first special with you and Sean, I had the passion for wrestling, and you guys had such a unique product back in the day. It's like the fact, and it wasn't even just the connection with Sharky. It was just mm -hmm. you know, reading the book and watching the documentary beforehand, and then reaching out to you guys if you wanted to do the interview. Just the whole, the whole big picture. You know, it's it's the business itself. And, you know, you mentioned Eddie Sharky, and and you know. Eddie, when I first met him, I, I guess I should tell the story of how I met Eddie Sharkey because that's something that I get asked over the internet quite mm -hmm. a bit. And um, the way that happened was Steve Angstrom, and I, you know, Steve Angstrom, of course, Mr. X, Pretty Boy Taylor, he was the, uh, the adult in the league that kind of joined under false pretenses. Right. I, the way I like to describe, I'm going to describe him real quick because I don't want to dwell on that guy, but, <laughs> but the thing with Steve, <laughs> the, the way to put him is he was basically just a 26-year-old teenager, okay? He wasn't no pedophile, any of that kind of stuff. Forget that. He was just a kid that was an adult that loved wrestling and wanted to do it. It was too small to really go anywhere. And that's really what he was. He really didn't belong. But he was so helpful in the beginning. I mean, in the beginning, he was such a help. I mean, he made the beautiful belts that we had. Before that, our belts were crap. And it, Steve came along and made these really nice belts. And he was very handy with the ring. He could make improvements and, and you know, just little things that he did was very, very helpful. But Ed, uh, Steve knew, Eddie, knew that Eddie Sharkey was promoting cards around town. And he's like, we really should go meet this guy. This would be something we should do. He wanted to meet him. And I didn't know at the time who Eddie mm -hmm. Sharkey was. I, I just, I didn't. And I, I was so wrapped up in the NWF that I really wasn't paying attention to the other things like right. that at the time. But and once he explained to me, he goes, well, he trained Bob Backlund, the Road Warriors, Jesse Venturi is like the trainer of trainers. And he promotes local shows, like, like kind of like what we just did at the Anoka Armory. Mm -hmm. Like, great, let's go meet the guy. I'm all for this. So we go into this little bar card they had on University Avenue. They had big black tarps barricading the back parking lot. And you had to go through the front of the strip mall to get into the back. Standing room only, about maybe <laughs> 30 or 40 people here in this whole event. Um, Steve, being the big BSer that he is, mingles his way in there and gets us in to meet Eddie. And Eddie... Sharky's reaction to us was open arms. He was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's you guys. I've heard about you. Yeah, you got the NWF thing you're doing up there at the armory. Sure, you know. First thing we could do is we got to do a card together sometime. This is the first thing Eddie said to me. And I'm listening to some like yep. big ears. I'm like, hey, this is more for the NWF. It was all about the NWF for me in our league. And I'm like, yeah, that'll just snowball the league even more. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, let's do something together. So I, I got in with Eddie that way. and and. Looking back at it now, Eddie Sharkey, I think, seeing that we were drawing hundreds of people at the armory. I was going to say, you're getting 
additional payday for his boys too. Exactly, and he he seen <laughs> he seen the draw we had, and he really didn't. I hate to say it this way, but he really didn't care if we knew anything about the business or anything else. He just knew that we were drawing money, and it was yep. all about the money. <laughs> Let's bring these kids in. We'll do a card together, and that's more money in the bank. I think that's what it was with Eddie, you know, in the beginning. Corner to my left, from Beverly Hills, California, weighing 130 pounds, Crusher Crossing. Hey! His opponent, from parts unknown, Mr. X. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this match at the Champlain Legion, November 30th, 1986. And this match between the World Junior of the National Wrestling Federation, Crusher Crossin, versus an old friend, or should I say enemy, to the National Wrestling Federation, Mr. X. Oh, almost sneaking up on Crusher Crossin here. Okay. Crusher Crossin, Mr. X tagging up. Mr. X on the ropes and uh, Crusher Cross and breaking. Goodwill matter with him and they lock up. Crusher Cross and this time on the ropes. Mr. X, oh, Mr. X hits him in the chest. Forearm smash. What's he trying to do? Headlock. Headlock, oh! Closed fist to the face. And Crusher Crossin. Irish whip and oh, over. Taking down Mr. X. Two count and Mr. X flips out. Two count by Crusher Crossin. Both very groggy early into the match. Oh, knee to the midsection. What's he trying to do? Oh! And Crossin almost going out of the ring into the ropes. Crossin holding his head, obviously, is hurt very badly. X taking him up. X taking him up. What's a suplex? Oh, a suplex. Suplex and Crossin down in the mat. Uh, we are roughly two minutes into this match. Oh, a knee. To Crusher Crossin. You hear the crowd cheering for the world champ, Crusher Crossin. Oh, a knee to the midsection of Crusher Crossin. He's not feeling very good right now. Oh. Elbow to behind the head, Crosser badly. Things looking grim. He's got the leg. What's he doing? Oh! The hamstring. Hurt hamstring of Crusher Cross and the champion not looking good right now. Off the buckle, oh, a leg drop to the throat of Crusher Crossin. Two count. Crossin mustering up all his strength. Mustering up all his strength to kick out of that one. And, oh, up against the ropes. Ref demanding, oh, a turnaround, oh. Forearm smash, karate chops to the chest. Oh, he's flipped down by Crossin. Taking a lot of cross and strength. X in the corner. The ref demanding Mr. X get out of that corner. Not, things not looking good right now for the world champ. He has recuperated from his injuries. Later on at the October Anoka Armory. Oh, a leg sweep to Crusher Crossin. Oh, no. Cross and will not. Some type of a crude leg. Oh! Cross and not feeling good. Things looking very grim for the world champ. Oh! Mr. X, another leg sweep. Obviously working on that. On that, I believe it is the left leg. Yes, it is. Oh! Trying to set up for a figure four. Cross and kicks Mr. X. Crossing coming up now, oh! Inverted blow to the neck area. Yes, 
across and exhausted at this point. Mr. X, the challenger, looking very good. Oh, a double. Oh, close this. Oh, close line to Mr. X. Mr. X down on the ground, holding his head. Crossing very angered at this moment. Oh, he tried. He tried to attempt the pile drivers outside of the ring. What a, he's in the ring and the Barbarian Conan, the Barbarian throwing him into the ring at the ringside at aid of Crusher Crossan. Mr. X whipping him around. Oh no, he misses. Hurting his ankle, I believe it is. Same ankle he hurt. Crossan very angered, a few choice words. And X, what X? X planning something right here. Irish whip, clothesline. Crossing down in the mat. A one count. Crossing flipped off with a great deal of tenacity. Ooh. Couple choice words to the referee by Mr. X. Mr. X attempting a lockup, Cross and slapping his hands. At this moment, uh, I feel Crossin is being very cocky. Crossin getting him in a headlock, applying force to Mr. X, X yelling. And what's it, X? Crossin lets him go. Very, very unwise move. X straightening the mask. X straightening the mask. What's he gonna do? No, choke hold, crossing against the ropes. Crossing somehow throwing him down. He uh, wanted to expect that rope. Oh, and heel kick, another heel kick, working on the head of Mr. X. X backing into the corner like a cornered animal. Oh, a kick to X in the chest. They Mr. X, crowding. X, exhausted. Crossing has turned this match around against all the odds. Oh no, a body slam. Yes, it is a body slam. Mr. X, oh, a body splash. Two count, oh. Two count by the referee. Crossing flipping out at the last moment. Two and a half count, almost. What is this? No, he can't get him down. He cannot get him down. This is the world champion match. Oh, X applying pressure to the head of Crusher Crossan. Oh, Mr. X whipping him around. Crossan training long and hard. I can't see the action from this. Oh, I see it. A headlock, X having crossing in a headlock. No, he throws him. Oh! Type of a flying body tackle. And oh! It's got him in a scissors hold. X. X, what is he doing? What is he doing? In the scissors hold. Nearly a submission hold. Crossing can't get apply it. X breaks out, should I say slips out, oh! Uppercut to the throat of Crusher Crossan. Come on, ref, that was a closed fist. They're silent, what's he doing back into the rope? Ref telling X, oh, into the, oh, no! X misses, landing on the pavement below Crossan. Very agile move. They are out of the ring at this moment. Oh, he throws him back in. Crusher cross him, throwing him back in. X in pain, obviously hurting his back somehow. Cross him, setting him up for something. Against the rope, X wall. Irish whip, oh, he misses, oh. Oh, um, oh, drop kick to Mr. X. And Irish whip, oh! Drop kick to Mr. X. He's trying to take the mask off, what's he doing? 
What is he doing? Oh, trying to take the mask off. X will not let him. Mr. X not letting him. What is he doing? He's up against the ropes. Crossing, oh! Long Rider trying to get him up into the scissors, into the head. Not achieving it. Ref telling X to get out of the corner. X does not want to take anymore at this point. X, ple X pleading and begging for mercy. Crossing not giving it to him. The ref shout, the ref shouting him, oh! Low down move, kick to the midsection, to the groin area of Crusher Crossing. Oh, I heard that one. I heard that one. What's he trying to do, setting him up, trying to set him up for the figure four? Will he do it? No, he doesn't. He has it. He has the figure four. X demanding he breaks the hold. X was on the ropes that time. We almost had a figure four. What's he doing? Boston Crab, he's going for the Boston Crab. He has achieved the Boston Crab. He has the Boston Crab. Oh, extreme leg power from Crusher Crossin. Crusher Crossin throw Mr. X, excuse me, rather Mr. X having extreme leg power. Throwing Crusher Crossin into the ropes, what's he doing? Winding up. Oh, he hit him square on. Oh no, the ear pop. Hit him in the ears. That can rupture a man's eardrums. What's he gonna do, setting him up? I believe it is. Oh, the semi body slam suplex. Getting up, top rope, what's he doing? Oh, body splash. Oh, X kicking out. Cross and achieved a two count there on X. What's he doing up on the, oh. Second rope, Mr. X kicked by Crusher Crossin. What's he gonna do? Trying to take the mask off. Trying to take, no. Sets him up. Oh. Excellent move, oh, leg drop to the arm of Mr. X. Arm hold. Ooh. At this rate, cross him, will dislocate his arm. Will dislocate Mr. X's arm. X trying frantically, X on the ropes. Ref throwing his arm off the ropes. What? No, one count. Pin X must watch his shoulders. X getting up. What's he doing? Oh! One arm down. Oh! Oh, he's stomping on the wrist from the hands of Mr. X. Picking up. Pile driver, I think it is. Oh, no! Turn off the lot, party's over. Pile driver to Mr. X, Crusher Cross him. Very well executed. Very well executed. Another pile driver, oh, he doesn't achieve it. The force the blow, that hurt both men. I don't care what no one says. Oh, a kick to the chest, another kick to the chest. And another, three consecutive kicks to the chest. Oh! Setting him up, I think. No, cross him, will not let him. What is this? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, oh! Cross him, mustering up every ounce of strength on that one. Off the top rope and oh! I think both men were hurt on that one. Oh, headbutt by Mr. X. What does he have, a steel plate under that helmet? Oh no, close fist to the midsection, oh! 
Oh, clothesline X down. What is he doing? Off the top rope, oh! Elbow, two count. Cross and letting him go practically. What is going on? Ooh. <laughs> Mr. X kicked there, he's hurt. Irish whip, what's he doing? Oh, flying clothesline. A new move introduced. Setting him up, wait a minute, no, what is, what is this, a cradle? One leg cradle, three count, we have a three count. The final decision coming up right now. What is this? What is going on? In the beginning, I think that's what Eddie's seen in us and stuff. And um, no, no, no problem there. We, we used each other. I mean, I was using Eddie's that's legacy, the the and he was using Seriously. us for a draw. I mean, it was, it was a mutual. It's a vicious cycle, unfortunately. It's the nature of the biz. And I have no problems with, no. with that. And, you know, Eddie and I were good friends back then. We shared, we bounced a lot of things off mm -hmm. each other. I kept telling him he needs to get on cable television. I was, he had no clue how to do that. And in fact, we even did a pilot for him once well, and did and one of his shows. My experience with Eddie, he was never really keen on TV in general. He always thought it would take away from his gate. Yeah, you know, they see it, if they see us on TV, well, you're not going to be seeing the same stuff. We'll be promoting the shows that are coming up, and he never quite got it until right before retirement. But you know, he he was classic, very business savvy promoter. Yeah, and he took care of the boys too. He really did. And he was a good guy with very open arms. Uh, acknowledged us, you know. Another guy that popped around and poked around at our first time car was a guy by the name of Jim Mitchell. Oh yeah, uh, he showed up. And this was before he did anything with the NCWA or any of that stuff, the Iron Duke. Yep. Was his name. <laughs> um, but he was just kind of just seeing what we were up to and everything. And, and people don't know this in this area, but, you know, Jim Mitchell's known for the NCWA. Mm -hmm. What people don't realize is the NCWA was actually a creation from the NWF. And the, re the way that all happened was with Steve, you know, we talked about Steve right. earlier, and, and he brought in Luscious Larry, the big guys. They all wanted to have their own league in 1987, so they broke off from our league and called their league the NCWA. That's how the uh, NCWA okay. started. It was Steve and Larry doing this. We did a March Armory card with them together, so it was the NWF and NCWA event. That's how it was advertised and everything. And we did this show and everything, and then they split with the ring and took the money, and, and we never we parted ways with that with Steve and Larry, and then they got hooked up with Jim Mitchell, who then engulfed the <laughs> whole course. thing. For it, and he took the NCWA over out from under them, so they lost everything with, with oh. Mitchell. But that's how Jim Mitchell got NCWA. It wasn't his own brain idea. He basically took it from Steve and Larry, okay. who kind of evolved out of us. And a lot of people don't even know that that's how that went, but that's the, the, the true story. I don't even like to acknowledge my involvement with NCWA because for a little bit, I just very short time, I, I worked with them in the beginning, but not something I really, really even cared about. Eddie, you know, I, I had. The opportunity to work with both and being them out of the business, it's it's a little shoot. I, I harbor no ill feelings, but Eddie was a <coughs> businessman. Jim Mitchell was a carny. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah, you know? That's a good way to put it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I, so I never, my, my only involvement with Jim Mitchell was a handshake at the first armory card when he told us we had a good show and everything. And said, you know, that's cool. You know, I, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into that. I mean, he didn't say anything other than, you know, talking to us a little bit at the show and after the show and he left and so I never really thought yeah. much of it. You know, it was kind of cool to see a guy that was in the AWA because that's all I really knew him for. Right. Yep. Was the Iron Duke, but yep. uh, that was about it. But, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, just looking at, looking at the early footage, fast forwarding into collaborating with Sharky, um, into all the awards for the documentary. Fast forwarding to the state of wrestling now, I'm gonna go off uh, on a tangent here. Your opinion on the state of wrestling now, in general? 
My Be as open as watch, you wish. My favorite time to watch <laughs> professional wrestling was probably the Attitude Era and back during the Monday, Monday Night War uh, era. Um, then it was a lot of fun to watch. You didn't know what was going to happen. They tried to suspend belief. I think that's how Eric Bischoff mm -hmm. put it. They had a pretty good job of it. You, you didn't know if what you were watching was real or fake or scripted. You, you had no mm -hmm. clue, and it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, it's not what it used to be, mm -hmm. uh, especially we were talking about lately, the direction uh, the WWE has, has gone in recently. It's, it's kind of painful to watch, and there's a few other ones out there. TNA, that's even more painful to watch. Uh, Ring of Honor, they they got a few few good wrestlers on there, and that's mm -hmm. that's that's kind of fun to watch. I love DCW. Yeah, uh, those guys were madmen, you know. Yep. Uh, but it's just uh, we still, I think a few of us still watch wrestling though. Mm -hmm. um, up to this day, we just went to a WWE Elimination Chamber together. Oh, cool. A few yeah, of us. we a had a great time. I agree happen. with Chad too. That Attitude Era was fun. That was about the time when I first started watching wrestling again after being out of it. When I got out of it in '90, yeah. and didn't watch a whole lot of it, I, just here and there. But Attitude Era was interesting. Definitely brought the best mm -hmm. out of both. Today, though, as of right now, it is tough to watch sometimes. Um, this thing, oh. some of the decisions they're making and stuff. It, here's the trouble, and I can speak from experience. Okay. When you're the Booker. You can't be in the main event. You can't be, and I was the man, and I know what that's like. You put yourself in the main event all the time, and I can see Triple H doing the same darn thing with himself. What they need to do, they need to get somebody in there, like Vince, or somebody who's really not involved so much to do the booking. Because when you're the booker, like if I'm the booker, mm -hmm. the problem with that is Crusher's going to book Crusher. It's just the way yeah. it goes. That never happened. And that never happened in the end of the year. No, no, no. Crusher, and he never no. won just because he... <laughs> <laughs> no. I forgot how many times. Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer. How many, how many times <laughs> that time? Did I get introduced as the Hall of Famer? Yes, you did. I did. I did. I heard that pot early five on. Timer too. <laughs> the five. Do I hear that all the time? <laughs> you know what that means to me? You lost the title four times too. <laughs> but not to you. Well. <laughs> and not to you. And oh, <laughs> here we go. He won't wrestle me. <laughs> <laughs> he won't wrestle me either. Smash, you couldn't even beat Tough Tony, and we talked about this. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of Tough Tony, he weighed how much? About 68 pounds. Hey. So this 42-pound wrestler <laughs> sent me a text, and he just wanted to, to, he couldn't make it today, and he wanted to show that uh, he was sorry, and uh, wanted to let you know he was thinking doing? of him. Hey. There's a fly swatter that you broke on uh, when I was interviewing Complete you. with flour? <laughs> yeah. Isn't yeah. that special? <laughs> <laughs> I was interviewing. I never him with a fly swatter. I was interviewing Sergeant Smash once, and he decided to go crazy and took a plastic fly swatter and the wall and it broke, displaying his incredible. Yeah, was, uh, How does one break a fly swatter to start that thing with? Was really, by the like sun, it was like it was ready to explode. It was so. And one more interview here with Sergeant Smash. Would you like to say a few things, Sergeant Smash? I hear that dirty flies running around here. He's squashing everybody in the ring. Well, fly, I, ch I challenge you to a fly squatter match. <laughs> I don't care. Please, Sergeant Smash, take it easy. Uh, breaking a fly swatter shows his incredible strength right on national TV. Whew. Okay. Well, the thing with the promos, though, you guys, <laughs> and, you know, we're cutting, we're, we're, it's fun, and I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but they were nothing scripted there. So no. he, he didn't plan this to happen. He just had the fly swatter. He wanted to challenge me a fly swatter. I just thought it'd be a funny piece. <laughs> it hits the wall and it breaks. And that's where promos work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was back, shock in, master. back in the Crockett yeah. days, yeah, oh, God. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. <laughs> Worst gimmick ever. Back in the Crockett <laughs> days, you know, when Dusty was Booker, you know, okay, you got three minutes. You're working this guy, this town, you got three minutes. Boom, go. And that was it. And then they would, you know, just run free with the promo. Now, once the mic is in the face, the camera goes to the side so you can't see him reading what's behind the, you know, behind the interviewer. Right. You know, when you hire Hollywood writers to work backstage yeah. for you, no. And, and a lot of guys don't know how to cut a promo anymore like they used to. Like, I think a guy's well, like, they don't have to, they read. Really <laughs> well, I mean, like, you know, the guy out there, you know, he's going down. I mean, how many times have we heard that? 
they just nobody's creative anymore. No. And, and, no. and as far as how to get over. Well, it. those guys back in the day were they played their character. They didn't need a script. They didn't. You right. know, That's what I mean. They they would go feed off of each other. Yeah. And it was interesting. That's it exactly. Interesting to to watch. You know, I mean, Vince would go. You know, Vince or Vince Vern would pay a visit to whether it be Knox or Menards or something, buy that panel of fencing for all the major holiday cards, bring the Baron in with the tomato. Yeah. Yeah. And he could sell it for three minutes. He could sell a tomato and a fence panel for three minutes. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or get Jesse the Bot on there cutting a promo. Yeah, I mean, it that's was just classic case. Couldn't work, couldn't take a bump for nothing, but man, could he talk. He could oh, sell yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He could sell it. Oh, yeah. He could bring people to the cards, you know? Oh, we had a lot of funny stuff happen. Um, obviously, it wasn't scripted again. Uh, I remember <laughs> I had a mask on. Somebody had made the mask. Ang- who, yeah. <laughs> Angster made it. All right. They call it Mr. Unknown. He had no mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this idiot forgets to cut a hole in my mouth. So I, I get done wrestling on match. I had the feeling I'd been screwed by the mm-hmm. referee. So I come out spitting mad. So I'm talking to the uh, interviewers right after the match, and I come out, and I'm like, two. And there's no hole for the spit to go out. Spit on himself, basically. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, the Rack and Roll Express by pinfall. Not gonna stand for this crap any longer. You're responsible referee. The tags were, I don't know which one to call it. Now the tags were legal. Come on, hey, hey, stupid mic. <laughs> Spit on his mask, huh? Well, you just everybody in the back go, you just spit on himself. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, another thing too, everybody, <laughs> people ask too, like, have we ever, did we have any injuries out of all these years of doing this with kids and not really formally being trained? Was anybody ever get hurt? And, and, you know, surprisingly, not really. We didn't have any serious injuries, but I do remember, you know, I got to talk about it. It's the one time with uh, Peter Wynn. Uh, he's Vietnamese, Tokyo Terror mm-hmm. was what he was on the show. Heck of a great guy, and great character, and just, you know, <laughs> he was great to have on the show. And I had a match with him, it was me out of all people, and I, and I do a forward pile driver, and Peter got mixed up in what I was doing or which way I was going. I think he thought it was going to be a traditional, traditional pile driver, and I was going forward. He slipped out and landed <gasps> right on his head on Ooh. the Fredmore ring, which, you know, as you guys Ooh. know, that Fredmore ring had no give. The birth of the tombstone. I, 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 called, it, <laughs> I, I called it the human pogo stick because that's what it looked like. Um, Who'd you to challenge with? I would like to have a match with the Crusher. i like to say something. That Crusher, he threw chicken to meet Tokyo in the ring because he only fought one time. You see, that's why come he never fight me again. I, I saw that. Okay. Yeah. And he's in there with the champion right now. I could be wasting the champion right now, and I, I'd have the belt around my waist. Well, thank you very much, Ice Dragon, for coming in. But now back to the action. Crusher Crossing is in trouble. And there's Tokyo Terror 1, 2. Oh, gets out just in time. Looks like Crusher Crossing is having trouble in there with Tokyo Terror. And you call him your champion? Oh, right into the post. Goes Crusher Crossing a leg drop to match. I don't know what Crusher Crossing is doing in there. Uh-oh, it looks like he's coming back. I understand that Crusher Crossing has a brand new move called the one, two, three. Very, very devastating. I hope you know that coming July 26th in the Anoka Armory once again, uh, Summer Spectacular starring most of your favorite um, wrestling um, fans or your favorites. Good or bad, pile driver by Crusher Crossing. Oh, his head must be gone. Tokyo Terror, he's alive. He's alive. I'll believe it. Luxury Lane is back to go up against the Tokyo Terror, who you are seeing get de- um, destroyed right here. Tokyo Terror. Look, look who that Luxury Lane, whoever the person is, look who he has to go. Uh oh. What? And I remember he got up right away and grabbed his neck and he's holding it. And and, and of course, panic reaches. All the wrestlers Mm -hmm. jump in the ring to see if he's okay. And 
he was okay. <laughs> it was like a what they'd call a stinger. Yep. But his dad wasn't okay with it. That was the last time yeah. Peter was on the show. And um, gosh, I just that, that's the one time we. And maybe that was you know lesson learned. You got to be mm -hmm. very careful with what you're doing in that ring. And that was the only time I can think of, other than Charlie coming down on his with his ankle on the That's stage. What I was, one time. You remember yeah, that? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget the pain I felt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to finish. I got up and kept going. It just. It, oh, was this, this was during a match, or? Yeah, you know, at that time we were in the the studio and we right. had this. We didn't have the 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 ring. It was just a book. Uh, I don't know. It was the platform. Yeah, the ropes. stage. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. So I get ropes, yeah. brought up and slammed down in my. Uh, ankle hit the side of that wood. Yeah, where the two, the wood comes down is okay. like a sharp edge. Oh, and it hurt. Edge. I mean, yeah. you know, it was pretty painful, but. Uh. It was outside the ring, you know. And look at this, folks. Let's go. Uh oh, look at, look at Mark. Watch him close now. Watch. Mark's in the blue. Ooh, Whoa! Luxury Lane really got hurt there, folks. They had to rush him to uh, the. Luxury Lane hospital. is leaving. Luxury Lane's leaving the ring. People. This is no lie. What happened? Where's where Lu Lux Luxury, Luxury Lane's left? Luxury Lane really got hurt. That's not fake. He we just really got, got notified. Hurt. We just got notified he is. He got through it. And, and let me just say, this was on a show where Charlie was. Re he was the Luxury Brothers, and he had the karate outfit, and I was jealous of it because Jeff Fortell was his partner. And I didn't like that. <laughs> So anyways, and then we had went swimming at some lake or whatever, and he got into some jellyfish. So his hands are all bandaged up from the jellyfish. <laughs> we shouldn't even have been in the, at the show. It was poison ivy. It was a poison ivy. <laughs> jellyfish. No, jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was over late with the tonka. It was jellyfish. You got there because we were. He's thinking them. of jelly donuts. You were touching with your hands. And you're playing, you're Those green little things float in the water. Yeah. No, it was poison ivy. But I was touching. I remember those little green things. But it was actual poison <laughs> ivy. Well, <laughs> nevertheless, your hands are all bandaged they up. They were all bandaged up. And I mean, I had blisters. My fingers were like spread. It was sick. <laughs> but, you know, we had the wrestling and just kind of did it. You could have been the mummy. I could have been the mummy that day. <laughs> the <Yeah>. Yeti. <laughs> that's been done. <laughs> you know, you Not well, but it's been done. <laughs> when you talk about, about our thoughts on wrestling, you know, yeah. like today. And, you know, when Sean and I went to Maryland in 2006 and, and did that fan fest, um, you know, at that time, I had really stopped watching wrestling probably five, six years before that. And um, I just, you know, looking back at the, the what I grew up on, it was so different and changing so rapidly that I really lost a lot of interest. I lost a lot of respect. And I, I remember J Sean and I were down, and, and uh, Jim Cornette with TNA was talking to me and said, hey, why don't you move down to Nashville? This was in two, when we were at the okay. uh, Fan Fest. He said, you can wrestle for me. He goes, I'll put you on the circuit. And I mean, we were talking for an hour. We're having mm -hmm. fun. He liked my personality. And at that time, uh, you know, uh, maybe I was a little bit bigger, whatever the case might be. But um, I was sitting there thinking, and, and Sean and I were talking. And I just told Jim, because I have a family, and I was getting my businesses going at that time. Yeah. And the direction of wrestling at that time wasn't of interest. You know, a lot of guys would have jumped at that and said, you, really, you want me to come down and be in TNA wrestling? And you know what, to me at that time, it just, uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't something I was interested in. But it was, a, it, was, it was a neat experience, you know, to be asked to wrestle on TNA. Yeah. But. Little, as you can see, the wrestler's talking a little bit. Here's Rep House. Back to the ring, a few comments from Crusher Crossan. I will be asking Crusher Crossan a few questions during this match. Crusher Crossan is just taking a seat. Uh, when you go up against uh, Ace, do you plan to win? Are you really going to be able to get that title? Or do you think he's going to give you a kind of a run for your money? Rep Voss, you got to be kidding. I'm out there for one and one only, one and one, one reason, one only. I said it twice and I'll say it three times. I'm out there for that belt that he le legitimately stole from me. And not only that, but I teach him a lesson. He needs to be taught a few lessons. There you have a comment from Crusher Crossan. Determined to get the NWF title away from Ace. And now, now to the ring for more NWF action. We have a tag, Merciless, in against Pink Peterson, Pansy, Peter Pan, whatever you want to call him. He calls himself the Fantastic or the Fabulous One. 
You know, I'm just, it's the person you love to hate. Slap to the back, luxury lane from Omaha, the PWA. Yeah, you guys are the professional record. Full Nelson by Peterson. Still on the Full Nelson. Merciless has not been phased. Merciless near the ropes. Put your lane back up on the ringside area. Cluster Cross and having a few words with Luxury Lane. The ref trying to keep the match in hand. Seems to be doing a pretty good job of it. The tag between Ace and the fabulous one, Peterson, whichever you want to call him. Some prefer Panty, Peter Pan. Man, many names. A few comments for from Crush Crossing. You know, Ref, I was, the, 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 funny th the funniest thing about this th whole situation here is that uh, Peterson's family seems to be declining in wrestlers for their side. There's two of them. There's two of them here today. There's two of them on his side. It seems to me they're all starting to come on, on me, Nash's, and Ackerman's side, if you ask me. There you have it. Like Seems to be like maybe Crusher and Merciless have a way about their people on their side. You could just say maybe Peterson's mistreating his and Ace is cheating his his opponents. And a tag, Merciless and Luxury Lane. Merciless now in the ring with Peterson. Many names. Putting pressure on the neck, cutting off circulation to the head. That's a very painful move. Trying to fight back against Merciless. I just told uh, Merciless Mike to play Mercy with this guy. We get a submission right away. But he, he's too chicken. At the break of hold. Peterson is on the rope. It is broken. And finally, Merciless breaks cleanly. And he's on the ropes again. Between both opponents, things are starting to get out of hand. Three, three of the opponents in the ring at the time. Now back to two. He picks him up to an. Oh yes, air, airplane spin. Luxury lane. Airplane spin. Must have, merciless must have taught him a few tricks about the airplane spin. Merciless has mastered it. He knows all all about it. And now luxury lane using it against Ace, the NWF heavyweight. Champion. No, 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 no. <laughs> Joining me at ringside is Derek Madman Mash. Comments from Derek Madman Mash as Merciless is giving Ace the airplane spin. Yeah, you betcha he is. Mike, Merciless Mike Ackerman has one of the most devastating air spins I've ever encountered in wrestling before. He knows how to apply it. He can spin fast. He, he knocks out his person with just a spin and then drops him on their butt. Must say, must say he is devastated with that airplane spin. He has mastered it. He's quite good at what he does. And a tag, luxury lane. Things are getting quite out of hand here. We have a disqualification against Peterson, and it is the end of the match.
match for the wrestlers. For the wrestlers, the end of the match is not come to an end. Have to ring the bell. Match is over. We still have Ace and Luxury Lane in the ring battling it out. Either the time wasn't right, you didn't agree with the product at that time. You know, a lot of guys will just go because they see a blank check. Mm -hmm. But in hindsight, unless they have a direction they want to go or the promoter has something in mind for a program for them to work, yeah, a lot of guys just see the dollar signs and they work maybe one or two matches and you never see them again. Yeah. TNA had a five-sided ring, didn't they, when they started right, off? When they first yeah. started. Yeah. 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 Ring? Is that right? Yeah. That's when they were groundbreaking. Right. And then they had the uh, X Division matches. Yep. That's when Jared Bobby was promoting them. And yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, I can tell you stories stuff. when we were talking to Bobby Heenan. Some of the greats <laughs> oh, and legends <laughs> at the bar were sitting there talking oh, to him. And that's the best part of being involved just in the business. Amazing, <laughs> yeah. you know, all the yeah. stories. <laughs> and, right. and I remember stories. we were up at the bar in yeah. Atlas. Remember that, Sean? We were at the bar and I'm, I'm getting a, <laughs> uh, a water. And uh, <laughs> Tony Atlas. Yeah. Tony <laughs> Atlas comes up next to me and he's a big man. Yeah, he And I was big, but he was like a bodybuilder, right? Yeah. So I'm getting this water, and, and Tony looks over at me, and he goes, would well, you work out? And I looked at him, and I go, well, do you? That's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> uh, see, he, goes, he looked back at me, and he goes, that was kind of a dumb question, one. And I said, yeah, it was kind of a dumb question. But we sat there and BS the rest of the night. Great guy. It just, yeah. uh, you know, and some of these guys Sean and I are friends with today, you know, that mm -hmm. we do some communication with, and yeah. uh, a good group of of, uh, of people, you know, some go down the wrong path, just like in any sport. It's like I had, uh, before I formally left the business, I had the opportunity to go down to Waterloo at the uh, the George Trago's Luthez Hall of Fame mm -hmm. and yes. produce some stuff for them. So I got to see and video the whole induction ceremony and they had some round tables. So all these guys I got to see growing up, you know, and just meeting at the restaurant after all the formal stuff, meeting back at the hotel afterwards, and just hearing the road stories, driving five, six hundred miles for a thirty dollar payday and bologna sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But because they love the business so much. Yeah. Right. You know. Oh, I mean right. there was a time, Scott, back in the eighties that I just and and everybody knows this hit that is sitting here. It was my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. In in the early eight when I was doing the NWF, it was it consumed me. I mean twenty four seven. I did, I mean, it was just everything. I, I couldn't stop. I couldn't get enough of it. And if I would have had that drive and energy when I was, by the time I was working with Eddie in 90, I would have had that same drive that Waltman had when he came in at that time. But mm -hmm. at that point, I had had seven, six or seven years of it. And I, and I was seeing the ego clashes in the locker room, yeah. and I was seeing all the, everybody's looking out for themselves type thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what didn't interest me. And you know? It's happening more in the local, in the yeah. local circles. Yeah, you probably got yeah. burnout, Sean. You know, you were the pr producer. You did. Yeah. You think of all the hats you had to wear in your yeah. wrestling, and I yeah. mean, seven years of that would be tough. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. You know? and, and I enjoy. That's the thing I liked about working with Eddie at the end. Is I kind of enjoyed. I still loved the ring. I loved the w ring work, being in the ring and wrestling. I loved that. So I like that part of it. But getting away from the promoting side of it and everything, that was what interests me. But then I seen. The, the, the backstabbing, the angst oh, from the going behind my back and talking to Eddie about me and making Eddie get pissed, you know, mad at me. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I didn't want to have anything yeah. to do with. And that's when I said, you know what, I don't need this, guys. I got a college degree that I just got. I, I just don't need this. It's not There's fun no. anymore. Yeah. yeah. There's a term that one of my favorite guys on the indie circuit who trained here under Terry Fox, Austin Aries, mm -hmm. he has a term I love. TNA. Spot monkeys. The guys are out there for themselves. They'll do a 30-second high spot off a corner just to impress family and friends that are in the audience that probably didn't pay for their tickets. Um, and that's all they're looking for for the match. By the time they leave the ring, they're gonna, the people they're watching will have forgotten about the match and even that one move. It's not right. about showcasing one move. It's telling a story over the course of the match. Right. Some guys will never get it. Right. You know. Final thoughts. After all these years... What, uh, I'm going to go one at a time, what did uh, NWF, uh, or what influence did NWF have on you at the time, and what has it done for you today? What do you think, Sarge? Well, uh, it, was, it had quite the impact on, on me. Um, we are still friends today, you know, all these years later. I mean, we lost touch for a little bit there, but we, you know, 
got back in touch and just the fact that uh, I'm friends with these guys today and we can talk about all this stuff and we still give each other crap you know about <laughs> stuff that happened 28 years ago <laughs> you know it's just it's non-stop you know but uh, that's one of the things I treasure the most mm -hmm. is the friendships and and uh, you know that's cool Larry well I uh, I guess you know looking back I think you know, being a young kid and helping Sean out uh, to develop the pro rest, kids pro wrestling um, gave me the start of, and it's kind of hard, I mean, I've looked at this so many times, it gave me the start of my entrepreneurial skills. Okay. And when I look back at what we did with no adults and, mm -hmm. and getting kids to come and believe in what we're doing, because mm -hmm. we needed people, and then running cameras and producing and, and promoting, those things were a valuable thing for me. And it's something when I look back, uh, gave me those skills when, uh, today. Mm -hmm. It started at a young age and it just kept growing. So that was an awesome experience for me. And like Smash Mouth said, oh, I mean Smash, not Smash Mouth, that's what I <laughs> call him occasionally. Smash but Mouth had bigger Him and I too. had a lot, I didn't even know the guy that well, and him and I had a lot of fun for a couple years mm -hmm. talking I prefer trash. smash mouth yeah <laughs> smash mouth well, those kind of things like he said giving each other oh, you know, yeah. teasing each other That's whatever the and then thing. and coming together and and you know uh, this book and that documentary mm -hmm. and and uh, Sean and I uh, reuniting yeah. and and coming together and, and uh, promoting and mm -hmm. uh, going to Hollywood and meeting people that's, and the experiences. That's, that's so, cool. man, it's just, it, to me, it's just a whole bunch of things. It's not mm -hmm. one, it's just several things that um, I'm really proud to say that I, I was a part of and am a part of. Very cool. You know, so. Sean, I'm gonna save you for last since you're the sure. most long-winded one on this whole panel. <laughs> I will never hear the end of it. I know. I have to talk about each title. We'll right? be rolling the credits <laughs> over him and we'll slowly fade him down. <laughs> what about the backyard wrestling? <laughs> oh, don't, don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, being a hardcore uh, wrestling fan as a kid, I got to live my dream being a professional wrestler in cable TV. Um, that's something I'll have for the rest of my life and uh, I still get to watch it today on, on DVDs and such. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like Sarge said, the uh, friendships that I've made, uh, thanks to social media in, in large, um, that's priceless as well. I think we've known each other for what, 27 years now? Something like that, give or take. Yeah. That's a long time. And uh, watching Tough Tony beat Sergeant Trash, that was a highlight. Um, can we talk about <laughs> Tough Tony for? Can we put put, the, put this to an end? The kid was a no seller. You every so match I've seen him, they made a career he, out he, of it. The, I'm not finished. <laughs> the debut of uh, Crusher Crossen's one two three finishing move, which I took from Bach, but <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. It was a yeah, Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I just had a blast, and I'm I'm, I'm honored to have uh, been a part of it. Hey, Crusher, you got 10 seconds. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I guess, you know, when I think of the NWF, I was fortunate to be at every part of it. I was there from the beginning to the end, so I've seen every phase of it where, like, Chad and Chris had been in there through the Armory, through the, really the heyday era when we did the Armory shows. Charlie was there in the beginning. I was there for all of it, and I, my, my, my big re memory reflection is just the memories itself of all of that. And my, my wish is I wished I could have had everybody a part of that whole t thing from start to finish. So you could have experienced what I did because that was a thrill. Mm -hmm. That was really the thrill of seeing it from the beginning to the end. And even though things kind of went in different directions in the end, the memories we have today right. to be able to look back and say, wow, that was something pretty special. No, knowing the reach we had in the cable markets and, and how, how popular the show was, um, there was a time when you could go up to somebody and say, hey, did you ever hear this NWF wrestling on the, on the cable channel? It's good chances cool. they, they did. So, you know, to have that kind of impact locally, that was pretty cool. Yeah, we did the national cities, but I don't know how much of an impact that was because we were just, I was just sending tapes out right. and knowing they were getting aired, but there wasn't a whole, it wasn't hitting every mm -hmm. suburb like it was in the Twin Cities. So, uh, but yeah, my memories, and then of course my, my, my fondest memories is the five times 
as the NWF world champion. I mean, let's face it. Everybody sitting here has never had the title except me. And he'll never well, put you that won't title let me up. Go for the title. So yes. came up the PWE title for me. Well, but that was good it enough. Was my barf bag. <laughs> I'm, nah. in the, I'm in the best shape of my life right now. I could take him. You're in nope. shape too. Round I'm is a shape. <laughs> Smash mouth. Let me just make this body real. by Hans Donuts. Let me make this real clear. You are yeah, in good MWF shape. MWF Wrestling, sponsored by Hans Bakery. You're in good shape. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I can't no, promote the bakery. It's a pork chop and every donut. Listen. That was a have to get bakery. out of business now, isn't it? No, it's back in. Okay. Thanks for Not for long. long. <laughs> but no, Smash, here's the thing. He, he's in good shape. Okay, They've got a five-timer five for one I, special. I couldn't, you know, <laughs> if, you, if, you've seen a, if you've seen a before and after, you wouldn't recognize him. But the thing is this. You can be in tip-top shape just like Lane. Together, the both of you will never have that NWF world title, and you'll never beat the five. I want it. So you, forgot, you forgot the Hall of Fame. Oh, thing. and the Hall of Famer. Thank you there, Smash. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, seriously, all kidding aside... What? My, 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 my greatest memory is all these guys. You can so shoot. Just, Go ahead. And just having fun this with This character guys. thing's kind of fun. Do you want me to come out in character? <laughs> oh. yeah, I, wore, I wore the hat. Crazy. No. <laughs> I've been pretty restrained this whole time. I was time. hoping there was going to be metal folding chairs, but <laughs> yeah, the, the insurance wouldn't cover it. Yeah, the padding won't do much uh, damage. Um, following the Hall of Fame, we're going to have a Hall of Shame. Am I correct? That's right. The Hall of Shame. What was it that we, what, we were just talking about that? S <laughs> Sergeant Trash's Triumphs. Yeah. yeah, the Hall of Shame yeah. when it smashes recent four would make a good list. one. For <laughs> <laughs> you know, the good doctor spitting yeah. all over himself <laughs> out of a fit of rage. Yeah. Um, oh gosh. Sean trying to do the one two three move. See, the problem with the one two three <laughs> is it didn't work. Buck Zumoff's move, he'd go and run the guy up in the turnbuckle with the headlock. Zumoff. If the guy, yeah, if your opponent up. isn't cooperating, you're gonna look like an idiot. And I've had a number of them that didn't. But some, some did. Like he blames the yeah. opponent. Yeah. Well, yeah. He blamed the opponent. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's, never, it's a 50 it's never the five timer's fault. Never the five timer's fault. Never. It's always someone else's. <laughs> well, you know, some guys, could, some guys sold the moves well, like Steve Angstrom. He, he could sell a grape in there. But other guys like Kelsey, they were afraid to take a single bump. You know, it didn't help that I drop kicked him with those boots and hurt his chin, but. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that was another injury that we forgot about. <laughs> he didn't know it was an injury right away. <laughs> I think I remember there were other injuries. Oh, but. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, for these stories and more, <laughs> in all seriousness, um, gratuitous plug time. Um, the book is phenomenal. You know, I know a lot of, a lot of input went into it, you know, from, from guys that are here, not here, dissolved early on. Um, it's got the, both the positive and negatives. It, it goes into detail about your moving around as a kid and not being able to be as involved as you wanted to. Yeah. And it's, it's really a powerful story. So, I mean, whether it's the visual record, whether it's the written history, if they want more information on the, the PWF, or yeah, the, the NWF, PWF, don't ask. The NWF, where can they go? Well, our new website, it used to be nwfwrestling.net, but that company kept wanting more money for that name. So we, we just set up nwfwrestling.org, and that's pretty much where you can get all the information for NWF. They can get links to all the different stuff we've done. And don't forget about the Facebook page. And the Facebook page, yes, of course, NWF Kids Pro Wrestling. Where you can see the full list of all the, uh, the Hall of Fame nominees. And yep. talk to us. Yep. yep. And, uh, <laughs> You know, we are, you know, in seriously though, we are putting our NWF videos up on, on we're going to, partnering with Pivot Share, they're going to, nice. we're going to put all the, uh, all the shows up there eventually, so it's coming. Now, are you still involved with Netflix? Netflix has still got the documentary, okay. Okay. but they're not, they don't have it streamable yet, but I just got okay. a new contact on that to cool. find out, to get that going, so it's streaming. It is on Amazon Prime, though, it's streamable. So, you, you know, you can get hold of the videos any way you want, and like I said, go to, like Sean had said, go to... Uh, nwfwrestling.org and I, I'm getting the rap signal. Guys, this has been a blast. It's been fun. You know, Thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming. Lot. Thanks for making the trip, all of you. On behalf of uh, the rest of the NWF, this has been a roundtable reunion 30 years later. I'm Scott Jamison on behalf of Killer Penguin Productions. Thanks for watching.
should tag out, and that's what he's just done. Coming in now is Tommy Tornado Cannonese. Clunk. I think Tommy's knocked out. Just shot him on the ground. He's trying to pull himself well, together. All destructive. He's going for the top rope. Bombs away. Hey, look out! He got him. Oh, brutal. He was about 12, 15 oh. feet in the air. Tommy take back Bulldog. Bulldog working on one of the one of the destructors. Up for the body slam. Can he turn him over? He does. Yeah, Bulldog showing a little offense for once. That away, stupid. There's his usual Bulldog. And he'll take some punishment for that bonehead move. Oh, big body splash. I think the destructors could pin this man at any time. They're just going to uh, deal out a little more punishment. Get a load of that ring. That's really caved in in the far corner. When he smashed Bulldog through the air, that big tub what do you busted think? one of the supports under the ring. What do you think Bulldog weighs in that, Ken? It's probably around 200 pounds. Well, it looks like he's gained about 30 pounds since the last time I saw him, and that was yesterday. Well, one thing about Bulldog that the NWF does like is anytime he's in the matches, the ice cream procession is double. <laughs> Both destructors beating on uh, Bulldog. I don't know what the ref's doing. They've got to only go one at a time. He's being beaten to his usual pole. And all Tommy Tornado can do at the side of the ring is wait for Bulldog to come and tag him out. That's what Bulldog's trying to do. He's We're moving definitely going to have to have some repairs done to this ring uh, during intermission. Right now, Bulldog just take Tommy Tornado back into the ring. Boy, he just dragged his eyes right along that top of the, that burns, believe me. Now the destructors are changing. And Mystery Kid, he's giving some advice to one of the destructors. We have a body slam of Tommy Tornado. Well, it's Tommy Tornado. I know how he got his name. The guy looks like a whirlwind. Here. He's been thrown around his ring. He has shown absolutely no offense. Just being beaten to a pulp. No, not another pile driver. No. No. Oh! That's it. Turn out the lights, Tommy Tornado. Call the paramedics. But Tommy Tornado, they're pulling him up. They're not going to have mercy on him and pin Look him. They're going for a no, second pile one. driver. Oh, no. They'll be carrying this guy out in a basket. But Tommy Tornado gets up again for more punishment. Now off the ropes, the destructor. Tommy Tornado with a clothesline. Oh! oh we got a double teaming now. I don't know why Bulldog doesn't get some sense in and come and help his partner. The referee telling Bulldog to stay in this corner. Both destructors coming on Tommy Tornado. This is going to be a lookout. Oh, <laughs> that's it. If he gets up this time, I won't believe it. And the destructors, they're having no mercy. Next, we'll be pulling out some smelling salt to wake Tommy Tornado up. Keep on beating on him. Oh, backbreaker. They should stop this. This is terrible. No. Oh. I don't know if I can watch any more of this. Tommy Tornado being absolutely massacred by the Destructors. Jason Fawson should stop this match. A neck breaker coming up. He's got him set up with a neck. Hey, he came back with a knee. Tommy Tornado Look fighting Tornado. back. Look out. Reverse atomic drop. Well, that ended that flurry in a real hurry. Look at the workman over there. repairing the ring right during that. Suplex. Now one of the destructors getting the up on the higher up. There he goes. Another blow. I don't know how much more Tommy Tornado can take. Boy, double teaming blatantly. Here comes the mystery man. Another pile driver. Well, that's four pile drivers. <laughs> Guy is being absolutely beaten apart. These destructors, they joined the NWF back in January 1987, and I don't think they've made any friends. Absolutely killing Tommy Tornado. Going for the fifth pile driver if they can get him up. Put on the brakes. Over he goes. Tommy Tornado. And then he misses with the elbow smash. Oh, his right arm is in pain. 
but he manages to tag the Bulldog Butcher, and Bulldog Butcher chases one of the destructors out of the ring. Now both of them are running around the ring outside. Oh, wait a minute, this could be a count out. Bulldog got back in. Got a four count. Five. Six. But the, but the destructors are back in. Well, Gary, this ring can't hold these men. What's gonna happen when those giant unknown studs get in there against the lightning train? Look at a thousand know. pounds of beef in the ring when those men get in there. They're gonna have to reinforce that. Oh, thing so how about do that, it. the DDT? And now the Bulldog comes back with a blow to the throat of the destructor. Now for a body slam. Bulldog's got him up. Goes for the backbreaker instead. The destructors are getting paid back for some of the torture they did the Tommy Tornado. Well, you gotta hand it to the Bulldog. I never thought it would last this long. But they're hanging in their game leg against the destructors. Breaking the eyes a little bit. That'll teach them. Bulldog now throwing the, the big clothes line. The oh, back he under. does under it. Coming back off. Oh, he's clobbing him with a shoulder block. Fans. Double teaming. Get him out of there, referee. Fans at the Anoka Armory loving this one. Hope you're enjoying it at home on Public Access Channel 33. Throwing the Bulldog off the ropes. The destroyer comes back. The Bulldog hangs on. Goodbye, Bulldog. No, they throw the Bulldog out of the ring. Here comes that mystery man, Gary. The mystery man with steel gloves. Oh, no. steel gloves on the head. With those spike gloves. Oh, what's the ref looking at? Could have broke his head wide open. There's no padding in this. That's 100% concrete outside the ring. Oh, big blow to the Bulldog. They've got him on the ropes. Flipping him back in. Oh, the minute like a human bowling ball. The Bulldog looks. Just about out of this one. That was right across the throat. Another one. The refs got to get one of those destructors out of there. They can't double up on the bulldog. Oh, they always seem to get away with it. Look at the Mr. Man antagonizing the fans over here. Big body slam. The bulldog goes down and he's in pain. Tommy Tornado's recovered. Anytime bulldog can take him, Tommy can come back in. He'd be in pain too if you just had 200 pounds of blubber come down in his Oh, two. Double suplex. Oh, oh, man. man. The ref had his Bulldog is seeing all kinds of stars. The ref had his back turned when they did that double suplex. The ref was talking to Tommy Tornado. He's got to keep his eye on the destructors. I think it's poor officiating, Ken. Well, Jason Crossan isn't an official. I don't know what happened to the official. Must be got caught up in the traffic jam that was outside trying to get into the building tonight. Maybe he's in Crossan's limo that hasn't shown up yet. That's right, really Crusher Crossan. Uh, said to be showing up in here. Look at this. He can't get him up. He couldn't get the big tub up. He's too tired and he's going to pay for it. Bulldog takes another blow of the head. Exchange blows, now Bulldog hitting both destroyers at the same time. Mashes them together. One destructor out. And the other one Two destructors rolls out. himself out. Getting ready for a 10 count here. One of the destructors just about ready to get back in the ring as we take a look at the other one. We've got the mystery man is trying to console destroyer one. The destructor He's trying one. to get him to go back in there and double team again as usual. Bulldog coming on strong. Oh, flying drop kick and Bulldog's down. They want to it. He's holding his kidney. Oh, now he's getting blows to the back of the neck. Don't know how much one more man can take. I don't know what the time limit was in this match, but there can't be much love. I don't, I don't know if anybody's trying to get the word here at ringside with Jason Crowd. Hey, there's another club to the head with that spike mitt. Now oh, we've got him in the headlock. Oh, man. You gotta be kidding. Bulldog. He's first right into the mat. Bulldog's just laying there. He must be seeing stars. Bulldog, get over and take Tommy Tornado in. Bulldog's up, he takes in Tommy Tornado, and back comes Tommy Tornado. Bulldog, he's just barely hanging on. Tommy's Tommy got Tornado uh, revitalized, got quite a rest. There's a bundle of energy now, and now goes the destructor with a big clothesline and, and a leg drop. And he scrambled out of the ring, there you go. He walked right into the Tommy Tornado's facing him. 
Got him on the ground. And here comes the other destructor with a full chair. Now the big chair. Oh, what a blow to Tommy Tornado. Bulldog it back in the ring. The refs told Ken Boyer to hit the bell He's and call this bad He's job. It's got to be a disqualification. Now the destructors are coming back in. He's got a folding chair. Here they come again. Bulldog's the only one in. Big blow there. The mo mystery man, he's got himself in the ring. One of the destructors got Tommy Tornado. He had left out with Mystery Man blowing the his hands on Butcher. Now he's kicking him in the kidneys. So three on two. Get somebody on here. Get somebody on here, Jason Crossing. Mystery Man doesn't know who to hit. Wild driver on top of that steel chair. Oh! oh. This match is called, but somebody's got to stop this chaos. It's a three on two, the Destructors and the Mystery Man up against Tommy Tornado and no, Bulldog Butcher. No, their family stacked clothesline. This is brutal. Oh! <laughs> man, oh man. Somebody get that chair Completely out of the ring. Completely out of control. Someone's going to get killed there in a minute. Get out of here, Destructors. The bell's been rung for the here. eighth time now. Man, oh man, oh man. We're just about ready to get the official ruling from the referee. Think that's a disqualification, Ken? I'd say they both got counted out. That match was completely out of control. Well, they gave it to the Bruce Brothers. They gave the feature match to the Bruce Bulldog Brothers. Brothers. Get, out of, get out of here, Bulldog. Oh, man. That was the feature match between the Destructors. That's the only way those guys can win. Yeah, that's true. The Destructors up against Tommy Tornado, Cantonese, and Bulldog Butcher, the Blues Brothers, and the Bruce Brothers won it by disqualification over the Destructors. I hope we can get a replay of that stacked clothesline. They're famous for it. Of course, it happened about three minutes after the match ended. We have to wait a couple seconds for that replay, but... See, that wimp don't know how to wrestle if he, he put a book in front of his face. I mean, how did he, how did pretty boy Taylor lose the belt? Now let's talk about people like Steenerson and Campa, who I, I was in Florida once. What in the world, what in the world is going on here? This is now out brawl. Corporal. Kelsey against Steenerson here. Slick, Slick Steenerson be the new heavyweight champion? I don't think so. This is the heavyweight champion of the world. Not of the world, but of the Nash, you know. And this is Kelsey's belt. Pressure, pressure, doesn't like to look at me. Outside the ring action here. Oh, into the post! Oh, all right, Mr. Macho got what he deserved. Definitely, he was sitting there trying to... Look at that, Crusher, Crasson, trying to tell the... All right! Kelsey, go! Oh. Right in the back of the Kelsey is giving justice to the NWF and all the people at home. Stevenson is getting what he deserves. Can't be no DQ. And, ooh, what a bro! This is the fight to the finish. It is. One count. Only one time. Crusher Crossman saying slam him. Steenerson is nothing but a wimp. Look it. Can't even take a little beating. Crusher Crasson saying, body slam him. Yes, a body slam. Yes, a half body slam. 
Get this macho man out of here. What does Mr. Macho keep on holding this jacket for? Last armory, he'd probably be the national champion by now. That sand still must be irritating his eyes. What does Mr. Macho got in his bag of tricks? Oh, he a super kick to the stomach. It's just a matter of time before someone is pinned or submitted. One, two, oh, two count only. Yeah. And, ooh. Oh, super, super kick by Kid USA Kelsey. He won't get it. Mr. Macho's there. He pulled his hair. Mr. Macho is so dumb, he don't know what he's doing. I tell you, the man, he don't know nothing about wrestling. First of all, he is a dumb wrestler. He don't know how to wrestle. And I don't even know how he became the United States Heavyweight Champion. I just don't know how. We could have enough DQs for the whole night. We've had a lot of DQ moves here. Now for him, go to the Two count. Two. Uh oh, he goes over to Christian Carson and he goes over to Mr. Macho. Definitely, Slits Steenerson is hurt. Get Steenerson. He's hurt. Ooh, and a kick to the lower. Oh, and a knee. Oh, what was that? Something was flown across the ring. Oh. Oh, only a one count. Switch over. Two count. Two count. <laughs> oh, oh, the crusher got what he deserved. No. This no, has been it. history. I love every minute of it. This should be between Kid Kelsey and Slick Steenerson. That is no call this for Mr. Macho. This totally awesome match. I am loving every minute of it. There is no call for that, Mr. Macho Man. Whatever. What are you talking about? He's not so much. He had all the right in the world to do it. Because Crusher he is nothing better wait. but a low Pressure crossed it. He's going to have to. Uh-oh. Here comes a chair. Steenerson, cut open. Oh, <laughs> oh he's cut Someone. open. Someone, better get Crusher out of there. Uh-oh. Steenerson is cut open. Mr. Macho 
man. <laughs> He's hurt. Peterson, I don't know if you've seen it, but he does got a cut on the head from some foreign object. Oh, no. Definitely. Oh. Brings him into the middle of the ring. Heavyweight champion of the world! Flair! Peterson! He doesn't want to give it away! Kid Kelsey doesn't want to give it away! No! This is the... Pandemonium! Pandemonium! What does this say? manager out of there. But we do have a new champion. His name is Slick Steenerson. There he is. I do not believe it. Kid Kelsey claiming that he should have it. No, he wasn't. What, what is this? The smoke? Come. What is this? Crusher crass and throw some little pin so he gets the bell? That, it, that's right. This crusher is some kind of whip. When I get back into wrestling, the first person I am going after is Crusher Crossin. He just makes me sick. <laughs> 